but I, the, the, the one thing that I know there's, there's, there's a long, in any arm wrestler's career, there, of course, there's, there's a lot of changes that go on. There's a lot of, you know, big events. But I have to imagine that one of the biggest events in your career so far was your match against Jeff Hale last year in WAL. Absolutely. I mean, that's the biggest spotlight I've ever been under. It was uh, most most money I've ever been pulling for ever. And uh, I was never, ever a bigger underdog. Right, <laughs> right. Like, even when I showed up to the 2016 finals in Las Vegas, I wasn't yeah. even that big of an underdog, even though, like, nobody knew me then. Like, right, right. So t- tell me a little bit about – you know, because I I'll, I want to talk about that tournament in 2015-16 where you faced Bayers and Holland and Giannis and all those guys. I want to talk about that a little bit later. But how okay. between then and, and your match with Jeff Hale, how did that Jeff Hale match kind of come to be? Uh, well, after 2017, I had uh, posted up some really negative stuff about WAL and uh, – I was really critical of the league and the direction they had headed. But uh, once they brought the Supermatch series back around, like, I became a lot more receptive towards them. You know what I mean? Like, I was, I like this. I like where this is going. And uh, I, re- I wanted it in really bad, right? But I hadn't beaten anybody relevant in, but since 2016. In fact, I took some bad losses after that. And – I was walking around wild with an injury that I didn't know what was wrong. I thought like I'd be fine in two weeks and I'd test it a little bit. Like, okay. I can go to this tournament. And then it'd, like immediately, as soon as I'd pull somebody, it hurt again. And it was right. turned out I had a bone marrow bruise in my elbow and I needed 12 weeks off, you know, and I, I, I let a 12 week injury turn into like a 10 month injury. You know what I mean? Been it's there. Just, Been there. <laughs> so fast forward 2017 or 2018, uh, they they start calling people for the Superman series. I didn't get the call, and I, I was kind of shocked, right? Because mm-hmm. I'd always been in like a WAL guy, and uh, I'd beaten Giannis, and I'd beaten uh, Randy Bears, and I'd finished really high at that tournament. I won that Chicago major in uh, 2017. Where is it? Where, where did I put that trophy? Ah, this one. <sighs> Nice. This oh, is, yeah, yeah. This is like the coolest trophy I have. That is cool. Yeah, that was a cool turn. Um, after that happened, uh, yeah, we're progressing here, but uh, yeah, that's all right. I had a great. Right. I, had a, I had a good 2017 until we got to the Vegas Finals, and I took some losses there. And Hart wasn't in it. 2018 comes around. Wal didn't call. I start chirping online again. I start barking at Neil, right? I'm like, yep. Neil, what the hell, dude? Is, like, is this European Arm Wrestling League or World Arm Wrestling League? Like, what's with all the Euros? Fair, Come on. Fair. And, uh, and that's putting it nicely. I was a lot more uh, <laughs> vulgar with him. Yeah. I think I told him I was going to kick him in the balls or something like that or a couple different things, right? Yeah. And then I PM'd him. And I said, you know, like, how do you get into the series? You know, he's like, oh, there's a lot of different things that go into it, this and that. And, like, he, he wasn't descriptive at all at the time. Right. So I get it in my head, all right, I got to go out and start beating some names, right? So this Alan Fisher Invitational Tournament comes together in uh, 2018. It's in May, right? Mm-hmm. So right in the middle of the – or early in the WAL season. So I'm thinking, all right, I go out there, I put on a show, I beat these guys, and then there's no way they're not going to call me, Right. Right. So I show up out there, and it's same day weigh-in. Mm. I cut twelve pounds, right, and probably a little bit more. Brutal. And like I, I don't know how I screwed that up, right? But I was so dead the next day, and yeah. I hate making excuses because the guys that beat me, they they deserve them wins. You know what I mean? Sam Popsher kicked my ass. Juan Carlos Guy Arizani kicked my ass, and kudos to him, right? But I just feel like I didn't have the the best me out there that day. Sure. And I mean, I, I flew out there specifically to pull with Jamie Sheldon and Allen, and I didn't even get to grip up with them. You know what I mean? And that, 
that was kind of embarrassing. And uh, that big dose of humble pie was actually what I needed. Because I went back home and I called Dave up and I begged him to take because I wasn't training with Chafee at this point, right? I had kind of like uh, excommunicated myself from the group by making some uh, comments and posts and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. they weren't having it. So I kind of had to beg my way back in, you know what I mean? And uh, I apologized and told him, like, you know, things are going to change. It'll be different, you know? And I had a goal, and we were training hard there from, uh, gosh, would have been that May all the way through. and. Uh, I think the next tournament I hit up wasn't even until uh, January of the next mm-hmm. year, right? So it was and, a solid uh, chunk of training in there. It, it was. And I got beat by Ezzy Warden and I got beat by Chris Michaels same day. And uh, I'm like, shit, man, what am I not doing here? Added the gym back into it, right? Started going to the gym and here we go for a whole nother year, right? Yeah. 2019, 2019 comes along and uh we have that tournament out in uh, Harrisburg and I go to that well actually I, I take that back that tournament I lost to Ezzy and Chris was early 2019 so uh I had trained a bit took a loss at that tournament so now I'm thinking I'm not as good as I thought I was maybe I, maybe I really was lucky when I beat Giannis mm-hmm. and maybe I really was lucky when I beat Luke and like that self-doubt is it, it's, it's brutal terrible. it's brutal it really is but uh I went down to Harrisburg for the Pennsylvania the Keystone State Championships that oh, Paul yeah. Lynn put on yep and before I went to that tournament I basically put out a notice was like listen if you're top level lightweight and you're at this tournament I'm going to be at this tournament I want you to be here because you know this is this is going to be it, right? Yep. And, uh, it was almost like throwing down the gauntlet, right? Like Kind of like Doug Ehrlich did earlier in the year when he challenged any lightweight out in the country for $1,000. I like yeah. That's how Doug got his matches because he, he had yeah. a big ball and threw him down and, you know, nobody else wanted to match it. So right. <clears throat> here we are, that tournament in Harrisburg, it's like a 26-man class, right? A big class, mm-hmm. probably the biggest – that was definitely the biggest tournament of last year. I think it was bigger than Michigan State's. I could be wrong, but there was it was ridiculously huge. And I smash everybody. <laughs> Feeling good. Like, yeah, I got I got kind of ignorant on a few people. You know what I mean? Like there there was some chirping and there was uh, some uh, some things said and like I was I was basically puffing my chest out that day, right? Mm-hmm. And took a nice picture, posing with my trophy, and I said, "Listen, if you weren't here." You know, can't hide from me forever because I'm fucking coming for you, right? Right. So fast forward, now I start going to the WAL Super Series events just like as a spectator, right? I drove down to watch Dave Pohl with Michael Todd down in Richmond. I drove to, uh, I think it was it was Baltimore to watch Michelle Dugan pull with uh, Angie Rose and Jeff Hale pull against Sam Harris. Yep. And of course, I'm, I'm there, I'm watching the lightweights, I'm bird dog and everything. Right, like, because I want in still, mm-hmm. and I just, I don't know if I'm good enough or not, right? And here we are in Richmond. Giannis is there, and uh, Tom Holland's there, and I get to after pull a little bit with Tom Holland, right? Yep. And he's one of the ones that I was critical of earlier in the year that he got a spot and that I didn't. Like, I talked shit to Neil about it. And after I'd met Tom and we had ripped up and we got to hang out a little bit, have a few drinks, I messaged Neil and I was like, Neil, you know. I was wrong in what I said and thought about Tom. He really is, you know, like a good puller. And I started like typing out like how I thought the lightweight class fell out and this and that. And like, I asked him if there was anybody like in the country that like I could fly out and like go beat or, you know, to prove that I belong there. Right. And I'd have to go back and look at the messages to what he said, but like it, w- it wasn't promising. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I basically said, all right, well, 2019's all sewn up from what I've heard. You know, is there anything I can do for 2020 to get in? And he was like, sit tight. I was like, mm-hmm. all right. Like, I want to say like a week later, Jamie Bache ended up giving me a call. And it was, they, it was, what was it, July? July 3rd. It was almost a year ago to the day that uh, 
they called me and said, would you like to pull Jeff Hale August 16th or August 15th down in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Like I, my initial reaction was like, I paused. Like, I didn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. And the first thing that came out of my mouth was before I say anything else, absolutely. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> before I remember who Jeff Hale is, Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. Right? Yeah. And that day was practice down at Dave's house. And I get there and Todd Hutchings had come up to pull with Dave because Todd got a, got a match with uh, Jerry Cataract on the same card, right? Right. I come down the stairs and Todd goes, oh, there's the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> He's the first that one that came good. up with the sacrificial lamb comment. It wasn't Jordan Davis. It wasn't Ryan Bone. It was Todd Hutchings, and he said it right to my face, right? And when he said it to me, my my heart just went. Oh, right, like, just destroyed. Oh, no, he's right. Oh, my God, they're going to kill me. Oh, man. And then, like, the online comments, everything I'm reading, and it was just like, there's, like, people, I don't know if they believe me or not, but there was times at work, like, I had to hide because I'd like read a comment or something and the anxiety would be so bad. Like I didn't want anybody to see me. I like ducked down between the machine and was like, dude, I hope nobody comes around for 10 minutes because this one hit me in the feels, right. you know what I mean? Really? And, uh, and the worst is, is like guys that I've pulled with and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Guys that have beaten me that I've beaten and like trade wounds with that. I, I've always been cool with that local terms. Like the fangs come out, man. And it, they were just, they were not nice, not nice yeah. at all. I remember them comments and I, I, I remember everything right now. And I still feel like I got to give them kind of some payback for that. Right. right. Well, it, it's, it's interesting because I would say uh, for, for my money, it, it was one of, one of certainly the most exciting matches of that year. And um, I think you're right in saying that you were, it was probably the biggest underdog match that WL maybe has ever seen, possibly. It, you know, it, I think it possibly was. I mean, maybe Max was a bigger underdog against Cobra. Sure, yeah, yeah. And, but Max beating Cobra, you know, that speaks volumes for Max right there. Yeah, that was bad, uh, too. Yeah, you know, and I was, trust me, that thought was in my mind that Max beating Cobra when I was going down to pull Jeff. But the thing with Paul and Jeff was, is I got to pull him in 2014 in Las Vegas at the WAL event there. We were the very last match before the cutoff to the final eight because they did a cutoff and then they seeded the final eight right. and then they had them pull each other. And well, through the grace of God, I made it all the way down through the, through the B side. Um, I, I won like my first two or three matches and then I ran into Vasquez, yep. right? And he just, like a hot knife through butter. Right? But, like, I, I've been pulling, like, six months. So what's what's right. any of it mean, right? right? I, I beat, like, a couple other guys that had just shown up. And it was, uh, then we get to Jeff Hale on the B side. I think he lost to, I, was it Giannis earlier in the day? I don't I don't remember who he lost to. Maybe it was Alan Fisher earlier in the tournament. Right. But uh, I got to feel his hand. and. Believe it or not, I got the hit on him, but I bounced off his arm hard. Like, I was just telling my little brother this story the other day. Like, Bart Wood's wife, Jen, was selling T-shirts over in the corner, and she had a look on her. Like, she thought I broke my arm. And my arm, like, it hurt so bad. Like, I couldn't lift yeah. it up off the table. I had to, like, grab it and pick it up. And One of those bone benders. <laughs> yeah, it was just, like, it was vicious. But I got to feel his hand, and I knew what his hand felt like. So, coming into that match, like, I was – confident that I was like X amount stronger because I had beaten Giannis and I had beaten Luke and I had actually like been training for this right so I, I knew I had to be stronger than I was at that point I knew what his hand felt like I thought I could take it like I thought I was going to be able to bend his wrist back and the first two matches I was able to but I you know right well <laughs> let's let's got, that's a good yeah. place to transition into uh let's bring up the the video of that match we can get this to cooperate. Let's see. Well, I'm just gonna wait for my hard drive to fire up. It decided to go to sleep. But so, okay. So, are you seeing this here? Yep. All, All right. right. So, 
even before this match, when the slip happens, mm-hmm. uh, my whole initial uh, uh, move was to drive up and through his hand and get that wristband, right? Right. And I was able to accomplish that that first match. And you know how you get excited and stuff like that. I got away from that move for whatever reason. Like, right. It still looks so good. So, so right here, when you just, you just, that's, this is the thing that just, it makes my brain want to shut down is you just went through, you don't see people do that to Jeff. And so what are you thinking after that happens? What are you thinking? Uh, honestly, I was, I was like, was he sleeping? Like, I felt strong, but like, I didn't feel him hit at all, like at all. And I, that's one thing is only twice in that entire series of like six starts, or, or not six starts, it was like 10 starts with the slips and restarts and everything. Mm-hmm. Only like twice did I actually feel him hit. It was like when he set the hook and got me way off of my arm. And uh, Right, right. Yeah. Well, let's go. Let's go. Uh, match two now. You've got the one. All right, now he's trying to match me up top. He's trying to top roll here. Yep. It's just, it's not working for him. I give a little bump to the side, but he's burning me out holding here. Like my pronator is getting burned up right here, and uh, like I'm popping up. Like I'm excited. Like holy shit, I just got two wins on Jeff Hill. I might actually fucking do this. But when I get over to my corner, my hand is starting to blow up. You know what I mean? Like I can feel, I can feel it starting to pump up my form. Like I'm not going to be able to, to really like top roll as hard as I possibly can through this anymore. Right. Right. And also now the fatigue starting to set in the cardio or lack thereof is starting to set in. I'm breathing heavy. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, not only that, you're, you're expending so much energy to, to, to bust through like that, but I got to imagine that your, your adrenaline is just, you know, out of, out of the, out of the world at this point. Um, after match two, it started to dump, but like, mm-hmm. we go into match three and, uh, it's kind of funny because, um, my buddy, James Dugan, Michelle Dugan's husband, he was a fighter and he told me, he was like, man, I'd go and I'd like get a win early in the tournament. I'd beat this badass dude. And then I'd go home from there. Like, like, you know, right. and after match two, I started to take it home a little bit. I think, you know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. like, I thought I had it in the bag and here I am, I'm trying to bust through his wrist and I'm, you know, I feel like I'm almost going to get it here in a second before I take this elbow foul. Like I regrip right there and yep. I'm like just close. so close to busting his wrist back. But now I'm starting to drag back with my lat. I'm starting to separate his arm and I run out of pad on the side there. And if we were to kept that match going, if I don't take that elbow foul, I think I might win that match in a grinder. Cause right. we come up match four here and I, this is, this is the last bit of anything I got in the tank is this match. This is right. so, this is heartbreaking to me because this is so close. All right. So he hits into that hook there. Like he got the drop on me and all I'm trying to do is rotate through him and I'm, I'm dragging as hard as I can. I can rotate his wrist, like his arm backwards, but uh, like, I just can't get that last little inch it seems. But mm-hmm. what I'm looking at on the table is like, my angle's not as good. I think I pinned him. Frank mm-hmm. thinks I pinned him. But the camera, like what we're looking at right here, if my damn arm just wasn't in the right. way. So believe it or not, I've changed up my grip uh, just all because of this video. Now I go thumb uh-huh. on the low end of the peg and uh, keep my elbow a little bit higher instead of having my hand up on the peg. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> this, this match has actually changed my arm wrestling style. Wow. That's, that's an important part. match. Because I just want to go back to this one more time because – like, like you were w- within a centimeter of, of beating Jeff at this point. And what was, they stopped the match. Frank Bean calls the win, but then they went to the, they went to the, the video. And then what was the actual call? Did they get you on an elbow foul? So Bart comes back after the pin, or they go to review to see if it was a pin, right? Mm-hmm. Bart comes back and says, no pin but you now have an elbow foul. So they went to replay to see both, I guess. I like the replay rules aren't very well defined. Like right. in my mind, in a perfect world, 
or my perfect world, it would have been uh, like the old NFL rules. Like it's inconclusive. You go with the call on the field. Right. The call on the field was Frank calling it a pin, right? Right. And here's the other part of it is like, everybody knows I train with Bart. Like he got me into the sport, right? Like he's at practice. Like people see me with like, he's, he's got to like almost be like extra fair to Jeff in this situation. Right. Sure. Well, he gets but, so much shit to begin with. Right. Yeah. And if he calls that a pin for me, you know, people are saying, Oh, that's just because he's buddies with this guy or that guy. But Frank kind of let him off the hook for that by calling it a pin for me. Right. Like, mm -hmm. but I think that might've been in the back of Bart's mind. But here's the other part. What did I really lose by losing? Then I'm going to answer my own question on this one. And that's maybe nothing, really. But my stock rose. Uh, I got another match right off the bat. I mean, I took Jeff right down to the wire. I mean, maybe if I pin him in that last match, maybe we're talking about a hammer shot this year. But it, that's about it, right? And it, right. even still, that's – a stretch at best. So well, this is one of the things that I talked to uh, when Jamie was on about, you know, whether you won or not, it, that's, that's not what did it for me anyways. Uh, and, and my, my view of you, it was 100% the, the tenacity and the, the explosiveness and all of this, right? That's what did it. Uh, the win of course would be wonderful, but Man, I, I think you know the the first. I would have went out there and been Danny Tesh. I don't think I'd have been pulling Jamie at six oh one. Exactly, I agree. I agree. So we're on the restart now, and it seems like um, Hale got exactly what he wanted on the go on that one. Yeah, he he got into that hook. He took my hand basically out of the equation. Like I, I couldn't pull back. I couldn't engage any back pressure. I couldn't get into his fingers at all to open up his hand. It was all hook. And it was like basically like all bicep. And it, it, I was in a horrible spot. It, mm -hmm. I'm glad he kind of finished me off quickly. <laughs> I didn't want to hang out there. Right, right. But uh, I'm so, so dead. I'm so dead right. at this point. Like I can barely breathe. Uh, my arm is feeling like a balloon. And it, here, here we go again, man. I just I have absolutely no lock left in my arm like you can see just straight now like my hand wants to be there but my arm is shot out at this point yeah it just and says, it's just not responding at that point anymore yeah and when Giannis said his arm turned off after Yosef LeVay that match I never knew what he meant until this match like my arm turned off <laughs> right so so that that match um, amazing match, by the way. Uh, one of my favorites, for sure, from the last season. Just from the sheer, you know, the, it's got the underdog story. It's got, you know, the explosiveness, the shock of, you know, 2-0 against Jeff Hale. You lose it in the end, but... Oh, the hometown boy had to come back, right? Like, what right, the hell? Right. It was, it was almost too good, and it, it kind of pisses me off how good it was. You know what I mean? It was, it was like, perfect. Uh, uh, well, you know, in in some senses, everybody won, right? You 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 your stock went way up. Jeff got his win in the hometown. For us, for me as a fan, I I mean, there's not much more I could want out of that match. We won match of the night. I mean, yeah, you you really that checked all the boxes. It really did. It, it told a story, and it was it yeah. was entertaining. And you know what, that's, that's part of the thing with making these matches for Neil and stuff like that, you know? Like, mm -hmm. every match has to tell a story. And if it doesn't, then we failed, you know? Absolutely.